Senor. And I see the bishop now. Wait, 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 wait. the meaning of this, Senor de Gavillo? Your Excellency, I demand that you stop meddling in political affairs. I'm not meddling in political affairs. You lie. Did you not order Fray Antonio to preach against my government this morning in the Church of Santa Isabel? I have directed Fray Antonio to preach against cruelty and injustice toward the Indians. He was preaching revolt against the government. I had him dragged from the pulpit. You dare to use violence against a priest in the house of God? Your Fray Antonio was attacking the policy of my government. Your priests are encouraging the Indians to rebel and complain. They are preaching only that the Indians have the rights of human beings. I am provisional governor of Mexico. I will decide what rights they have. The King of Spain has appointed me protector of the Indians. And he has appointed me to civilize this wasteland in the name of Spain. This is a priest to teach these savages to be submissive and obedient to authority. No one has the right to abuse and enslave in the name of civilization. Because if we Spaniards were not Christians, we brought the cross to these people. You have laid it on their shoulders but discontented savages for all your waters of baptism. They should ever unite. They outnumber us ten to one. So you are afraid of them, huh? Not if you would stop listening to their complaints and acting as their champion. Why, they come running to you. The Indians come here only for help. For help. Take that one out there. I'll wager he has come with another complaint against my soldiers. One outside? Pedro! Why was I not told someone was waiting for me? Well, you were busy, Your Excellency, and it was just an Indian. How long has he been waiting? A little while. How long? Three or four hours. Three or four hours? What does he want? He said he has a message for you. A message from whom? He did not say, Senor Delgadillo. He would not tell me. Tell him that I'll see him as soon as possible. No, Pedro. Bring him in. Unless Your Excellency is afraid that I might hear another complaint against my soldiers. I have no such fear. Pedro, tell the men to come in. The bishop will see you now. What do you want here? I wish to speak to the Bishop of Mexico. I'm Bishop Sumaraga. What is it you wish, my son? I am Juan Diego. I bring you a message from the Mother of God. You say you, you have a message from the Mother of God? Yes, Excellency. I was on my way to hear the Mass at the Mission Chapel at San Jaime when the Mother of our Holy Savior asked me to come to you. Well, Juan Diego, I'm busy with the Governor now, but I would like to hear more about this later. No, go on, go on. The Governor would also like to hear this. But, Senor de Gadillo, this can be of no interest to you. On the contrary, I find it most interesting. It's an Indian with visions. Perhaps regarding the mistreatment of his people. Let us hear the rest of the story. This morning on Tepeyac Hill, I saw the lady, the mother of Christ. She said she was the ever virgin Mary. She said I must take a message from her to the Bishop of Mexico. And she gave you this message? 
she wishes you to build a temple for her on Tepeyac Hill. She says she is the mother of our people. She will comfort those who are sad. She will help those who suffer great trials. Well, Juan Diego, I, I have heard the message, and I thank you for bringing it. Now you may leave. My poor people, they have simple minds. Are these the complaints you fear? You will never learn. The situation is worse than I thought. That man is dangerous. <laughs> you, you, are, you are afraid of one poor Indian like him? If he spreads that story around, and if the rest get the idea that heaven is on their side, don't you see? It will be a rallying point. He will have given them a greater champion even than the bishop. Oh, Senor de Galilla, you exaggerate. I see that I will have to take the matter of the Indians out of your hands. You will never take them out of my hands. You have no right. I am their protector. From now on, all Indians are forbidden to come to you. Those who disobey will be hanged. The decree will be issued today under my seal. My little son, I've been waiting for you here on the hill. What did the bishop say? My lady, I am not good. The bishop would not believe me. No one will believe the word of an Indian. Who would ever think of me as a messenger from the sovereign queen of heaven? I am too small, too weak. Too poor. You must send an angel, a king. Send anyone except Juan Diego. Oh, my dearest son, there are many I might send. I have at my call the great of earth and the blessed of heaven. But I have called you, littlest and dearest, for this work. You have called me? What is it you wish me to do for you now, my lady? Go back to the bishop tomorrow. Tell him again that I wish him to build a chapel here on the hill. And when you have done this, come back to me that I may hear his word. I do not wish to cause trouble for you, blessed lady. I will do exactly as you ask. Juan Diego. Uncle, this morning on Tepeyac Hill, I saw the Blessed Mother of our Savior. There is no more wood for the fire, and I have not eaten since morning. I will get wood, Uncle, but this morning I saw the Blessed Mother. I have had no food since morning, and you sit there chattering. Well, 
This is a lot of the old. No one cares whether I have food or fire. Soon I will die, and then you will be burdened with me no longer. I will get wood for two days, Uncle. And I will leave you food also. Uncle, tomorrow I must go to the palace of the Bishop of Mexico. garden was open. An open gate is not an invitation. It is an accident. Now get out. I must speak to the bishop. The bishop is not available. I must speak to the bishop now. Senor Jackass, today is Sunday. Sunday is a day of rest. All good Christians rest on Sunday. The bishop is a good Christian. The bishop is resting. The bishop is not available. Now, do you understand? I must see the bishop. Get out, get out. Don't you understand that savages are prohibited from speaking to the bishop? If they catch you here, they'll hang you. Now, get out, get out! Hey, they're off. What is the meaning of this disturbance? Well, Your Excellency, this Indian came in here and he was begging. And I told him to Excellency, get out. Excellency, I saw the Mother of Christ on Tepeyac Hill again. She told me to come to you. She told me... Just one moment. Now, Pedro, you go watch the garden gate and see that no one enters, huh? Yes, Your Excellency. Come walk with me. Now, Juan Diego, you say that you saw the lady again on Tepeyac Hill. Yes, Excellency. She asked me to return to you. She says again, she wishes you to build her a temple on the hill. Juan Diego, do you know what it is to tell a lie? Do you know that it is a sin? Yes, Excellency, I know. And do you know why it is a sin? Because God made the tongue to speak truth. If it speaks a lie, it is not doing what God made it for. Now, Juan Diego, you tell me, what does this lady look like? She is more beautiful than any woman of earth. She wears a, a, a blue veil and mantle and has the face of a woman of my people. She looks like an Aztec? Yes, Excellency. She, she looks like a goddess. No. No, Excellency. A goddess is cold, like stone. She is like a mother. Sit down here. Now, tell me, Juan Diego. Tell me about the first time you saw the lady. I was on my way to Mass when I came to Tepeyac Hill. There I saw the Blessed Mother of our Savior. So you left the Indian with the bishop? Yes, senor. You will keep me informed, Pedro, of anyone who goes to speak to the bishop, especially if that Indian should appear again. Of course, senor Dagadillo. But uh, it may not be easy. <laughs> of everything, senor.
this is the way you waste your time. Carry out these orders. Go to the gate of the bishop's garden. An Indian will be leaving there. Follow him, but don't let him see you. He will go to the hill of Tepeyac. Watch every move he makes, and then seize him and bring him here. You do not believe me, Excellency. But Juan Diego, how can I build a church just because one man tells me he's had a vision? Listen, my son. I have a message for you to deliver to your lady. What is the message, Excellency? You tell your lady that the Bishop of Mexico asks for a sign that she's truly the mother of Christ. Tell her that he must have proof that this, this temple is truly her wish. I will tell her, Excellency. But I do not know what she will say. What did the bishop say this time? Little lady, I told him what you said. And he listened. I hope you will not be angry, but he did not believe me. He said, I must bring him a sign that the temple is truly your wish. You have good heart, dear and faithful son. You've done well. Return to me tomorrow and I will give you a sign for the bishop. Tomorrow he will believe you. I will do as you say, honored lady. I will come back tomorrow at dawn. Stay with you through the night, Uncle. We must have you well by morning. Because at dawn, I must again go to see the mother of our Savior.
one, Diego. I'm dying. Bring a priest for me. It is morning, uncle. I must go to the Blessed Mother of our Savior. You would not let me die without a priest? No, uncle. I will go. I will go. I will go another way so the Blessed Mother does not see me. my lady. I hope you slept well last night. Are you feeling well this morning? Are you trying to avoid me, my small son? Forgive me, little lady, but there was no other way. My uncle is close to death of the fever, and I am on my way to bring a priest to him before it is too late. After I have done this, I will return to you, and we will talk about this other matter. Do not let your heart be disturbed, my son. And do not worry about the illness of your uncle. Am I not here, your mother? Do not worry any longer, for I tell you already he is well. Oh, my lady, you are good to tell me this. Now I will do whatever you wish. Go to the top of Tepeyac Hill, and there you will find roses growing. Gather as many as you can in the lap of your tilma and bring them to me. Then go to the bishop and tell him that by this sign he is to do what I wish. Let no one see what you are carrying, my cherished one, until you are in the presence of the bishop. Do not be afraid. Today the bishop will believe you. Go now, little stand there. sent you a sign. She says... Wait, I... wait. Seize that man. Stop. What are you and this Indian up to now? My soldiers reported that he was sneaking down the street hiding something in the silma. I want to see what it is. He says he has a sign from the Mother of God. Whatever it is, I must see it. Juan Diego, show us what you have in your tilma.
New Mexico, the land of enchantment, a land so vast that it never seems to end, a land where the past and present are mystically intertwined. They flow together through the sky, carried by the wind and the rays of the sun, the rustle of the leaves of the cottonwood trees, and the restless wind through the pueblos whisper the mysteries of the past, legend after legend, miracle after miracle. So it is with the miracle of the staircase. In 1851, the Sisters of Loretto, a religious order in Bardston, Kentucky, dispatched seven sisters to go along with Bishop Leamy to bring religion and education to a wild and God-forsaken country. The nuns traveled for many months, first by paddle boat, then by covered wagon, weathering extreme hardships to reach their destination. Calamity and disaster haunted them all along the trail. Mother Superior Matilda was struck with cholera and died shortly after arriving in Independence, Missouri. Another sister survived the cholera, but was too weak to go on and returned to Kentucky. Once while on the prairie, they were surrounded by a great number of hostile Indians, and the sisters were greatly frightened. Although the Indians mysteriously did not attack, one of the sisters died of fright and was buried on the lonely prairie. Santa Fe, New Mexico territory of the 1850s was raw and unsettled. It was a haven for outlaws, gamblers, and fur traders. Adobe huts with dirt floors served as homes as dogs, hogs, and burros roamed the narrow winding streets. The sisters lived at first in a one-room adobe hut with a mud roof and dirt floors, a far cry from their comfortable quarters in Kentucky. Even though the sisters had reached their long journey's end, they could not open their school as they didn't understand the Spanish language. They began to study diligently under the tutelage of Bishop Leamy, and soon were fluent in both the language and the customs of their new land. The Academy of Our Lady of Light was finally opened in 1853. It was the first permanent school for girls in the territory. Along with their religious teachings, the usual subjects of arithmetic, history, and geography were taught. Social refinements for the young ladies were also included. An uncle of two of the students was quoted as saying, them our nuns do a heap side of good in this God-forsaken country. His name was Kit Carson. By 1873, with a firm educational foundation laid, it was time to build a chapel. The chapel was to be similar to Bishop Lemy's beloved chapel, Saint-Chapelle, in Paris, France. The sisters placed the entire project under the patronage of St. Joseph. And on July 25th, 1873, work began. Using sandstone from the summit of Cerro, Colorado, 20 French and Italian stonemasons began their work. On April 25th, 1878, among the huge and ancient cottonwood trees, there finally stood a beautiful chapel. The Chapel of Our Lady of Light was finished and dedicated.
Sanctificator hoc ecclesiam in nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti, et Orationes in The chapel is the largest example of Gothic-style architecture west of the Mississippi. The windows with the strong sapphire blue hues were made from the finest hand-blown glass from the Dubois Studio in Paris, France. The Chapel of Our Lady of Light is indeed a work of art in itself. It remains a symbol of the heroic efforts of the Sisters of Loretto. Sisters, what do we do about this? Mother, what can we do? The sisters now had their chapel, but had no way of ascending to the choir loft due to an engineering blunder which omitted the stairway. What can we do here, sir? Well, sister, we can build a stairway in here, but we'll have to move on to these pews. Oh, no. We can't do that. Seeing it was hopeless, eventually the sisters decided to do nothing until they made a novena to St. Joseph. A novena required nine days of regular meditation and prayer. Arising an hour earlier each morning, they entered the chapel and began praying to St. Joseph for a solution to their problem. Agitorium nostrum in nomine domine, qui fece celum et Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus, descendat super vos et maniat semper. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Come, little darling. For eight days, nothing happened. Then on the last day of the novena, a knock was heard at the chapel door. A white bearded stranger appeared and asked to speak to Mother Superior. May I help you, sir? Sister, I am in search of work. And what type of work do you do, sir? I am a carpenter. We do have need of a carpenter to build a stairway in our chapel, although many carpenters have told us that our task is quite impossible. Sister, you must have faith. The sisters hired the stranger but were reluctant in doing so, as the only tools he possessed were a hammer, a saw, and a T-square. Asking the sisters for three wooden tubs of water, the carpenter began his work. For several months, the carpenter labored at his task, never asking the sisters for food or supplies or the money with which to purchase them. When he was finished, the carpenter called the sisters into the chapel. Sister, your many prayers have been answered, and the blisters on my hands are not in vain. You have your staircase. The miraculous staircase, having no center pole for support, rests entirely on its own balance and geometrical design. Using wooden pegs instead of nails, a wood of unknown origin, the staircase makes two 360-degree turns as it ascends to a height of 20 feet. Climbing the staircase, a holy feeling overwhelms you, as if you are afforded a glimpse into the past. Sisters, I have counted the steps. There are 33 one for each year our Savior, Jesus Christ, was on this earth. <sighs> 
Sisters, where has the carpenter gone? Where could he have gone? He was here a moment ago. Where could he be? I don't know. He was just here. Alonzo. See, Mother? Go to the carpenter's quarters and tell him we will have a feast tonight in his honor and we will pay him for his labor. The carpenter and the borough are nowhere to be found, and already in the village there are whispers that it was St. Joseph himself who built the staircase. The sisters searched the village, but to no avail. The mysterious stranger had disappeared. Can't you see on? Um... Oh, excuse me, sisters. What can I do for you? We're looking for the carpenter that built the staircase in our chapel. We thought he might have stabled his burrow here. Well, I've heard plenty about that staircase, but I ain't seen no carpenter. And besides, we don't stable burrows here. Now, you two sisters better hightail it on out of here. Stable ain't no place for you ladies. But if you do see him, please let him know that we're looking for him. Yes, ma'am, I'll do that but you won't find him in no stable. Thank you. Well, remember, sir, that a stable and a burrow were good enough for our Lord. They also discovered that no lumber yard in Santa Fe had supplied wood for the miraculous stairway. Excuse us, sir. Yes, ma'am? We are looking for the carpenter who built the staircase for our chapel. Yeah, I've heard about that staircase, but I ain't seen your carpenter. But did he buy wood and supplies for me, sir? No, ma'am, he bought nothing. And if you ask me, you ain't gonna find your carpenter. And why is that, sir? Because the scuttlebutt is, he's not of this earth. And that's all I gotta say on this matter. Now, if and you'll excuse me, I've gotta go to work. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The stranger never again returned to Santa Fe for recognition or payment. Who was the mysterious stranger who answered the sisters' novena? Could it have been, as the sisters of Loretta still believe, St. Joseph, who had trod along the shores of the Sea of Galilee so long ago, returned as a messenger from God on a sacred mission? <laughs>